Good morning, children. Good, Good morning, morning, Father. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Tobit and his son, Tobias. And wasn't there an angel too in this story? <laughs> yes, Lucy. There's also an angel in this story. The story is based on the book of Tobit, which was written towards the end of 3rd century BC. Shall I begin? Yes, Father. In the city of Tishbe, the native place of Elijah, there lived a man named Tobit. He lived with his wife, Anna, and his son, Tobias. Tobit was a man of faith, and he lived according to the laws of Moses. But Israel was attacked by Assyria, and they took the Israelites to the town of Nineveh, their capital. Tobit and his family were among the captives. These exiled Israelites had settled down outside the city. Seeing that the Ninevites worshipped the idols, some people among the Israelites too started worshipping their gods. Hey Tobit, oh hello! Aren't you worshipping the gods today? No my friend, I would never worship the idols. It's against the law of God. Ha, huh. you and your gods. God has already abandoned us. Look at our condition now. We should worship the Assyrian gods now. I'm sorry, my friend, but I would like to stand firm on my faith. Hey, who is Tobit here? Him. He is Tobit. Yes, I am Tobit. Why do you ask, sir? You must come to the palace immediately. The king wants to see you. The king? Why does he want to see me? I have done nothing wrong. I don't know about that. You must come with me right now. Hmm. All right, sir. I will come with you. He must have done something. Why would the king want to see him otherwise? Yes, it's true. He's going to get punished. Look what your faith has brought you, Tobit. Hmm. In fact, the king did not want to see Tobit for punishing him. He actually was going to reward him. Are you Tobit? Yes, my lord. I am Tobit. Why did you want to see me? I have done nothing wrong. Ha 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 ha! No, I'm not going to punish you. In fact, people have told me that you are an honest and talented man. I wanted to make you the supervisor in charge of foreigners who live in Nineveh. I also want to trade goods with our neighboring states. Huh? You should take charge from today itself. I will provide you with a house inside the city. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my lord. Tobit worked hard and he traveled far and wide for trading with different countries. The king rewarded him abundantly and he became very rich. One day, while he was in Rages, a small town in Media, he went to visit Gabel, one of his old friends. Jabel, my friend, I want you to do me a small favor. What is it, my friend? Here, this bag contains 10 talents of silver. Huh, why are you giving this to me? I want to keep this money safely for you. I have more than enough money with me today. I don't know what's going to happen in future. Could you please keep this money safe for me? I will come and collect it when I need it. Of course, my friend. I will keep this safe for you. You can trust me. But by the time Tobit reached back Nineveh, the good king had died. His son had taken charge and he was very, very cruel to Israelites. Hey, Tobit! Hello, sir. How are you? Not good, Tobit. I'm here to warn you. What happened? Tell me. The king died a few weeks ago, and his son is ruling the kingdom now. Huh? Oh no! The new king has removed all the Israelites 
from his council, and he has replaced you two, my friend. But why? You mustn't protest, my friend. I'm telling you this in good faith. He is killing the people of Israel for no reason. But, but what wrong did they do? Is being an Israelite a wrong thing? Shh! Be silent. Look over there. That's what he did to the people who protested him. Oh my God! Why did he do this? And when were they hanged? That must be a few days ago. A few days ago, their body deserves a proper burial. We can't let their bodies be eaten away by vultures. We must bury them at any cost. You're on your own, my friend. I can't help you with that. If the king knows that I buried their bodies, then the next body would be mine. I'm sorry. No, I can't let their bodies hang like these. And that night, Tobit took the bodies and gave them a proper burial. What? Where are the bodies? I don't know, my lord. Maybe someone would have taken the bodies to bury it. What do you mean someone took it? Find out who did this and hang him. Yes, my lord. Realizing his life was in danger, Tobit fled from the city. When the king knew that it was Tobit who had buried the bodies, he confiscated all of his wealth. Tobit's family was reduced to poverty and they had to live without Tobit for many years. After many years, the evil king died and he was succeeded by a new king, Esarhaddon. He was a kind man and he ruled the land just and fair. When Tobit realized it was safe, he came back to his home. Oh, my home. It's so good to be back. My husband, you're back. Anna, my dear. It's so good to see you. Where is Tobias, my son? There he is. He was out for working in the fields. Father? Father! Tobias. Father, you're back. How are you, my son? You... you have grown up so much. Come, dear. Let's go inside and have something to eat. You look so weak. Anna prepared a huge feast for Tobit, who came after a long time from hiding. Oh, it's so much food. We are seeing you after a very long time, dear. Please eat and fill your stomach. But there is plenty here. We must share the food with the poor. Tobias, go into the town and bring some of the beggars. The Lord has been merciful to us. We must share this food with them. We can call the poor tomorrow. You must eat this first. No. Food must be shared with the hungry. Tobias, please go and get them now. Yes, father. You are overdoing it. When will you start thinking about your own family first? Haven't you learned anything from what happened to us so far? Don't worry, dear. If we help the poor, then God will take care of us. Father? Father? What is it, son? What happened? Father, there's a dead body lying in the market. It looks like somebody killed another Israelite. Is there anyone there with the body? No, the body is just lying there alone. All right, let me go and see. I can't let one of our own just lie there. But please, have your meal first. I have to bury the body first. I will come back and eat after that. Tobit took the body and gave it a burial with the help of his friends. <sighs> And that's done. Why haven't you still learned? You just returned from hiding because of burying the Israelites. If someone comes to know what we did, we will lose our heads. But how can we allow our brother's body to be eaten away by birds? No, I cannot let that happen. We are leaving. We'll get in trouble if someone sees us here. Aren't you going home, Tobit? No. 
I touched a dead body, and I'm unclean. I will sleep under the street tonight and go home in the morning. But that night, bird dropping fell on his eyes and he lost his eyesight. Ah, oh, I can't see. Oh my God, bird dropping in my eyes. I can't see. No. Tobit's life became more miserable once he lost his eyesight. Anna had to work as a maid to support the family. Oh, there you are, sitting around all day doing nothing. Anna, you are home. Did you get any food? I'm starving. Why should I be the one to get food? Why don't you ask your God? You are always praying to Him. Don't talk like that, dear. God will help us. I have had enough of you and your God. Lord, my God, have mercy on us. Look kindly upon our sufferings. In the meantime, in the city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Ragel, had lost another husband. It was her seventh husband who had died, and every man who she got married to died the very next day. Look at Sarah, just sitting and crying like as if she had nothing to do with it. You think her husband just died? She must have killed them all. And now, she's pretending to know nothing about it. Not one or two, but seven are dead. Stop it! Please don't talk like that about me. I'm innocent. Oh, you want us to believe what you say? Everybody in this town knows that you are the one who killed them all. No, I didn't kill them. Please believe me. What do you want us to believe? That one by one, seven of your husbands had heart attacks? And that too the very next day? Stop it. Please don't say any more and go away. Okay, we'll go. But don't think that we believe you. Oh God, I have had enough. I would rather die than go on living like this. Lord, please have mercy on me. Anna, I just remembered that I had given some money to my friend Gabriel. We could get it back any time. Huh? You are remembering this now? You should get the money immediately. We don't have to starve like this anymore. Tobias, I'm blind and I cannot travel that far. Can you go to Rages and collect the money from my friend? Of course I will, father. Good. Then you must go and find a trustworthy man to travel with. We can pay him for his time. I shall go right away, father. Tobias walked for a long time searching for a travel companion. He couldn't find anybody who knew the way to Rages. Ah, I'll sit down here for some time. How am I going to find someone who knows the way to Rages? Hmm, I must trust in Lord as Father says. He will show me a way. Hello. Huh? His face is so, uh, so beautiful. What do you want? I saw that you were sitting here tidily. Is there something I can do to help? Oh, I'm looking for a travel companion who knows the way to Rages in media. I can help you. I know the road to Rages. I have been there many times. That's wonderful. Do you know the house of a Gibel there in Rages? Ha! Huh, of course I do. I have stayed at his house for a while. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a great coincidence. Please, can you come with me to Rages? I can pay you for your time. Sure, why not? We can start today itself if you want. Oh, by the way, my name is Tobias, the son of Tobit. What's your name? I am Azarius, and I belong to the same tribe as you do. All right, 
Come, let's go home and pack our things. Tobias left for Rages along with his newfound friend and travel companion, Azarius. They sought the blessings of Tobit before they left for their journey. Azarius, please take good care of my son. I will, sir. My son, may the God bless you. May his angels protect you all the time. Have a safe journey and return to us soon. Tobias and Azarius walked for a long time and soon they reached the banks of river Tigris. Tobias, it will be dark soon. Let's camp here tonight and continue the journey tomorrow morning. Yes, friend. Hmm, the water looks very clear here. Let me take a bath. Go ahead. The water is very deep, so be careful. I won't go far. Hmm, it feels so nice. Huh? What is that? It's... it's a whale! Azarius, help! There's a whale coming! It will kill me! Don't worry. It's just a fish. Catch it by its tail and throw it onto the shore. Huh? That was so easy. Here, take this knife. Hmm, we can roast the whole fish on fire. It will be delicious. No, I want you to cut the fish and keep the heart, liver and gall separately. We can roast rest of the fish. Uh, why do you want to keep those? I will tell you that on our way. Tobias did as told to him. He kept the heart, liver and gall of the fish separately wrapped in a bag. They continued their journey and after a few days, they reached the city of Egbana. Look there. That's the city of Egbana. Did you know that you have one of your relatives living there? Our relation? Father didn't say anything about them. His name is Ragel and he has a beautiful daughter, Sarah. You, my friend, are her next of her kin. Sarah? Daughter of Ragel? I think I've heard the name somewhere. Hmm. You must have heard the stories of how seven of her husbands had died after marrying her. Oh yes! I've heard about the evil spirits that is in love with her and how they kill anyone who marries her. Yes, it's true. Not one of her husband had survived a day after marrying her. Poor girl. I hope I can do something to help her. I think you should marry her with the intentions of starting a sacred family. Huh? But what about the devils? Don't worry about them. I will take care of that. Come, let's go to their house. There's something special about him. Anyway, I'll do as he says. Tobias married Sarah as Azarius had told him. Tobias. Son of Tobit, I give you my daughter, Sarah, to be your wife, according to the law of Moses. Azarius instructed Tobias to burn the heart and liver of the fish inside their room. What are you doing? I'm burning the heart and liver of the fish that I caught the other day. Why are you burning those? I don't know, dear. My friend Azarius had told me to do this. Now come on, Sarah. Let us pray for God's mercy. Oh God, have mercy on us and let us live together for a long time. Oh God, please don't let anything happen to Tobias. His father had suffered a lot and my daughter had been suffering for a long time. Please let them live for a long time. Master! Master! What happened? Did Tobias die too? No, Master! He's alive! <laughs> Tobias is alive! Praise and glory to you, my lord. Thank you. The evil spirits in Ragil's house flew out when Tobias burned the heart and liver. 
Tobias was alive and he was happy that he did as Azarius had told him. My friend, I don't know how to thank you. My father-in-law has given me half of his wealth too. My father and mother don't have to starve anymore. It's all because of you. Thank you, my friend. Everything happens as per God's plans, my friend. Now you stay here. I will go to Rages and meet Gabriel. Thank you. Here, take the scroll with you. This document will tell Gabriel to hand over the money to you. I will be glad to do it. I will be back within a week. Azarius returned quickly, and when he came back, Jabel also came with him, carrying the money. Tobias decided to return to his father along with his wife, Sarah. My daughter, go in peace. Respect your husband's parents as your own. Let us hear only the best about you. They traveled for many days through the hills and deserts. Tobias had become a very happy man now. He had a beautiful wife and he had plenty of money with him. Azarius, my friend, all these good things happened to me only because of you. I'm only sad thinking about my father. Only if he could get his sight back. Hmm. Do you have the gall of the fish that I told you to keep aside? Yes. I have. I've been carrying that all along. As soon as you reach home, you must put the fish gal to your father's eyes. Huh? Why should I do that? You must trust me, my friend. Hey, look! It's our son! Huh. <sighs> He's back. <laughs> yes, he is. My son. Mother, it's so good to see you. Tobias told them what had happened. And then Tobias applied the fish gal on Tobit's eyes. Huh? I can see now. <laughs> I can see everything. Praise and glory to God for allowing me to see again. Father, this is a miracle. Yes. It is my son. We must thank Azarius for this. It's he who told me to apply this on your eyes. And all the good things that happened to me, my wife, our fortune, it's all because of him. Son, I don't know how to pay you. We will pay you double. No, we will give you half of everything we have because of you. We were blessed in so many ways. Tobit, huh? Be grateful to the Lord. He has seen all the good deeds you had done. He has seen your miseries. And he has heard your prayers. I am his angel. My name is Raphael. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing mercy on us. And that day, God rewarded Tobit and his family for never losing hope in the midst of hardships. Tobit lived for a very long time and he went on to see his grandchildren. So children, did you like the story? Yes, father. Shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, father. Tell me where was Tobit and his family taken to? After they were attacked by Assyria. He was taken to Nineveh. Why did he have to run away from Nineveh? Tobit had buried one of the Israelites who was hanged. This angered the king and he sent men to kill him. That's why Tobit fled right away from Nineveh. Very good, Lucy. How did Tobit lose his sight? One night, Tobit was sleeping under a tree. While he was asleep, droppings of a bird fell on his eyes and he lost his sight. Good, George. How did Tobias save Sarah from the evil spirits? The angel told Tobias to burn the heart and liver of the fish inside their house. The evil spirits went away when Tobias did as the angel had told him. Right again. And how did Tobit get his sight back? Tobit got his sight back 
when his son rubbed the gall of a fish on his eye. Correct, Matthew. That's all for today. I will tell you the story of Daniel tomorrow. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. Goodbye, everyone. Father, are there any more stories about Daniel you told us yesterday? Of course. There are so many. Do you want to hear another one? Yes, yes Father. Father. All right. Listen carefully. In the last episode, we saw how Daniel was put into the lion's den because he worshipped the God of Israelites. While he was in the den, an angel appeared and saved Daniel. King Darius realized that Daniel's God was the one true God and he instructed everyone in the empire to worship him. Daniel was rewarded with many gifts and the king appointed him as one of the main advisor in his council. Daniel's wisdom grew famous among the empire and many people came to seek his advice. It was during this time that there lived a man called Jochim. Jochim was very rich and he was also a kind man. He was considered wise and was liked by everyone. In those days, the court hearings were held at his house. What is your complaint? You may speak in front of the judges. Sir, I had borrowed 100 shekels from this moneylender last year. But now he's saying that I have to pay him 500 shekels back. We are very poor and we could not manage that much money. When we failed to repay, his men came and evicted us from our own house. Please give me justice, sir. He is lying, sir. He had borrowed 500 shekels from me last year. Here, I have the proof with me. No, I did not. I don't know to read and write. And he cheated me. May I see the document? Sure, sir. Hmm. What do you say, Jochem? Is he telling the truth? No, sir. This document is forged. The farmer is telling the truth and this man is lying. Then we must punish the money lender. No! You must give back his property immediately and you shall be sentenced to prison for three years for violating the law. Guards, arrest him! No, please! Thank you, sir. I got justice because of you. Don't thank me. It's God who saved you. Now go in peace, my brother. The judges heeded the advice of Jochem, and justice was served to everyone. Jochem had a wife, and her name was Susanna. She was a firm follower of Lord God and a devoted wife. They lived happily with their three little children. Oh, there is my youngest son. Did you miss me, you little one? You look so tired today, dear. Yes, Susanna. It's been a long day. The number of complaints are increasing every day. Here, drink some water. When are the new judges coming here? Oh, I forgot about that. The new judges will start coming from tomorrow. I hope they are honest and kind to the people. I hope that too. Many lives are dependent on these judges. But the two new judges elected that year were wicked men with no fear of God. Hmm, Joe Kim looks like a very rich man. Look at his house. He must be taking a lot of bribes. Otherwise, how can he be so rich? Whether he takes bribe or not, we should not let him stop us from taking the bribes. How can he stop us? Don't forget that we are the judges. <laughs> Catch me if you can. Ha <laughs> ha. I will just see. Excuse me? Are you joking? Yes, I am. And you must be the newly elected judges. Yes, we are. That's great. We were waiting for you. Come. Please be seated. Stop playing and come inside, children. Father has work to do. 
Wow, look at her. She is such a beauty. Oh, I forgot to introduce my wife. Her name is Susanna and these are my children. Susanna, which means Lily. Nice name. You are beautiful like a lily too. Thank you. I'll leave you now. You can start with your work. Joking? You are a lucky man to have such a beautiful wife. It's all his blessing. This man borrowed 200 pieces of silver by pledging his land. It's been more than two years now, and he is not returning the money, nor is he allowing us to confiscate his property. Sir, there was no harvest last year because of the famine. Everybody knows about it. If he takes away my house, then my family will have nowhere to live. All I'm asking is to give me one more year to pay the debt. Please, sir, please give me justice. Sir, I think we should give him some more time to repay the debt. What? One more year? He already had enough time to repay. Yes, we must rule in favor of the money lender. But, sir, no buts. That's our decision. You are free to confiscate his property. And you, you poor soul, you should repay your debts in time. Now go away. No, please, take him away. This is unfair. Gods will never forgive you. How much did the money lender pay us to rule in his favor? Hundred silver. <laughs> We will soon be very rich. Ha 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 ha. Where are you going? Uh, hmm. I'm a little tired now. I will come back in some time. Come back soon. We have many complaints today. I will be back in a few moments. What happened, dear? Why are you looking so upset? Those judges, they... What happened? They are so corrupt. I saw them taking money from the money lender, and they ruled in his favor. They crossed the life of a poor man and his family. What am I supposed to do now? Hmm. Don't worry, dear. God will take care of it. Susanna had a habit of taking a walk in a garden after everybody had left. That evening, as usual, she went out with her maid. Why do you take this walk every evening? Hmm. It's a big relief to spend a few moments silently in this garden. That's why. But the judges hadn't left and they saw Susanna walking in the garden. She is beautiful. She is amazing. What? Did you say something? What? No, I, I did not. Did you say something? No. It's time to leave. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Huh? Did he go? Hmm. He's gone. Now I can watch her all by myself. Huh? What is that? You? You... you didn't leave? Yes, I. Uh, I was. But what are you doing there? You tell me first why you came back. There is something going on. Hmm. If you promise to tell me the truth, then I shall tell you my reason. All right, all right. We have done so much together. And why should I hide the truth now? I was standing here to watch Susanna, wife of Joe Kim. Ha 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 ha! Honestly, that was my plan too. Ever since I saw her, I just can't keep her out of my mind. Same here with me. <laughs> it seems that she takes this walk every day without fail. Then we shall come every day too. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! The judges made this a habit. 
Every day, when Susanna comes out of her walk, the judges hides nearby and watch her. As days passed, their passion for Susanna became uncontrollable. They started making devious plans to achieve what they desired. One day as usual, Susanna came into the garden. There she is! It's so hot today. I think I'll take a bath in this pond. Would you please go and get my things? Yes, madam. And hey! Don't forget to lock the gates when you leave. I will, madam. When the servant left, the judges came out from the hiding. Come quick! This is the best chance we will ever get. But what if she won't agree? How can she? We will threaten her and force her. Don't forget that we are the judges and we can do anything. Hmm. You are right. Let's go to her. Huh? Honorable judges? How come you are here? And that too at this hour? We don't have any time to chat with you. Give yourself to us just for a little while. We shall leave before your servant comes back. What are you saying? Don't you know that's a sin? Don't teach us about right and wrong. We know all about that. Come on, just this time. No, never. I will not. It's against God and my husband. It is wrong. Don't you know who we are? We will destroy you and your family if you don't agree. First we'll charge false accusations on you and then we will kill you. And after that, we'll kill your whole family too. Don't you want to save yourself? Your husband Joachim seems to be a kind man. No. God, help me. No God is coming to rescue you. Say yes to our demand and you shall live. It is a sin to be with you. And if I refuse, then you're going to kill me. God, I place myself in your hands. Please save me. You are still refusing? Come with me. We'll show her what we can do. Please, God. Please help me and my family. As Susanna cried aloud, the servants assembled outside the gates of the garden. The judges opened the gates and came out. They started telling a false story to accuse Susanna. You dirty woman! We now know what kind of a woman you are. What's the matter? What happened to you, madam? We shall explain that tomorrow during the hearing. Now go and lock her up till the hearing starts. The judges decided to accuse Susanna of a crime she did not commit. There were many people outside Joe Kim's house eager to know what had happened. Yesterday afternoon, when we were walking in the garden, we saw your wife Susanna with a young man. Huh? I was with him in the garden and I saw that too. She was standing with a man under a tree and embracing him. No! That's a lie. Shut up, let us finish. When we reached near where they were standing, the young man saw us. He panicked. He pushed us aside and ran away. We thought you were a pious woman. But she's a sinner. According to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. But sir, I know my wife. She's a pure woman. There must be some misunderstanding. Are you saying that our eyesight is poor? We saw them and it was as clear as daylight. Now take her away and prepare her for her punishment. No, sir, please. Gods! All that you said is a big lie. You give false witness and then you judge? May the Lord protect me. Mother, please don't go away. I don't believe it. There is something wrong. I know Susanna. And she is as pure as her name. She would never do anything wrong. 
people knew that Susanna was pure and has done nothing wrong. But the judges had given their orders and it had to be executed. With much reluctance and sorrow, people took Susanna outside the city gate to be stoned. But God was going to protect her. Our plan worked. She will die now and no one will know what we did. That was a brilliant plan. Oh no, I don't know what to do now. I'm sorry, dear. I never thought those judges could be so cruel. It's not your fault, dear. Don't worry and trust in God. Everything is happening as per his plans. Hey, look over there. Who's that? That's Daniel, isn't it? Why is he blocking our way? Hey, look. It's Daniel. I hope he will do something to save our madam. Daniel! Huh? What is he doing here? Daniel, what are you doing here? Move aside and allow us to go. Israelite, how foolish are you to condemn an innocent woman to death? And that too, without a proper trial? What are you saying? We gave her a trial and found her guilty. Everyone, return to the court. These men have given false evidence against her. I will prove that. Everyone, come with me to the court. How dare you accuse us like that? If what you are saying is the truth, then you can prove it in the court. I will be questioning you individually to test if what you said is the truth. You go and sit in the other room. I will call you once I'm finished with him. But just obey him. Otherwise people will know that we lied. All right, I will go. Now, you tell me, tell me what happened in the garden. Yesterday afternoon, we were walking in the garden when we saw her with a young man. They were standing under a tree and when we approached them, the young man pushed us aside and ran away. Hmm. Now tell me, under what tree did you see them? Huh? Hmm. Uh. I saw them standing under the oak tree. Yes, it was an oak tree. Oak tree, is it? You have heard what he said. I will now call the other judge. You can go now. Send the other judge. Tell me what happened yesterday. How many times do I have to say that? Just tell us one more time to prove that you were telling the truth. Hmm, all right. Both of us were taking a walk in the garden yesterday afternoon as usual. Suddenly, we heard some sound. And when we looked there, we saw that Susanna was embracing a young man under a tree. We were. Can you tell me under what tree were they standing? Huh? I... I think... It was that mastic tree. Yes, it was that mastic tree. Liar! Huh? Liar! Liar! You wicked sons of the devil. The other judge told us that you saw them under the oak tree. And now you say that it was a different tree. We know now that you are liars. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. How many maidens were abused by you? When Susanna resisted, you decided to kill her. Liars! Kill, kill them! them! Kill, kill them! Release her! Take these men instead and punish them! Mother! Oh, my child. The judges were taken outside the city gates and they got the punishment they deserved. God will never abandon those who trust in him. Susanna, I am proud of you. You chose to die rather than to sin. You are a role model for all. May God bless you.
praise and glory to the Lord who heard the cries of the innocent. Thank you for saving me, Lord. How can I thank you? I will sing your praises for the rest of my life. And that's how Daniel saved the life of Susanna and her family. That was an amazing story, Father. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Father, are you going to ask us any questions today? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, yes Father. Father. All right. Now tell me what does the name Susanna means? The name Susanna means Lily. That's correct, Matthew. And who was Susanna's husband? It was Joachim. Correct. And tell me how Daniel proved the innocence of Susanna when she was blamed of committing a sin. He called the judges separately and asked them to name the tree where they saw Susanna. When both of them named different trees, Daniel knew that they were lying. Excellent, George. That's all for today. I will come back tomorrow and tell you the story of Esther. Thank you, Father.